Hey everyone, I just wanted to quickly go over how I created a Calendly-like uh, feature within my app. Um, it's not perfect and I'm still working on it, but this is what I have so far. So basically, um, we're going to go and look for a specific coach. Um, and we're going to book a session. It's automatically going to pull up the sessions for today. Um, and yeah, there are no available slots. Um, tomorrow, it looks like there's mainly mostly available. Let's check Thursday. All right, so the, mostly available. And then like, yeah, I can click. All right, great. And I'll confirm for 12 p.m. Great. So the way I'm doing this in Xano is um, a little complex, but uh, essentially what's going on, I'll have to pull up my uh, back end here. So I have this availability, and this is basically the window of availability for a particular user. And what I'm doing is I have these pre-formatted days here, and then I have uh, the start time and end time, so that the window for that particular day. And what I'm doing with that is uh, I'm, you know, filtering, uh, deciding which day to look at based on the input date, um, and I'm going grabbing whoever they're looking for um, and I'm creating a window, a window of availability, this variable right here based off of what I got. And uh, then I'm filtering it for that specific day and then I'm creating a start time and formatting it and doing the same for the end time. And then I'm putting the date and the time together. Uh, because the ones in my table don't have the correct dates, right? They just have the correct time. Uh, so I'm putting the date and the times together. And then I'm creating the same for the start date and the end date. Um, and that's how I'm doing it. I'm just replacing these two and then putting them together and then parsing it. Okay, so ba what we're going to do is we're going to create the time slots and the way that we're going to do that is we're going to create the total available hours um, based on the the window uh, so we're subtracting uh, our start date from our end date and we're creating an array called available slots and then we're using a while loop um, and this is 3.6 million milliseconds which is an hour so while uh, it's the total available hours is greater or equal to an hour, uh, we're gonna keep doing this. So we're gonna create a, an object, a slot, and then we're gonna set our start date in there. And then we're going to uh, set the start date again and then add an hour, and that'll be our end date, uh, time and date. And then we're gonna subtract an hour from our total available hours and then we're gonna add an hour to the full start date. So the next slot, the next loop goes around and it starts at the next hour. Um, this is crucial. I did not f figure this, why things weren't working and, until I added that. Um, and then, yeah, just add it to the array for the available slots. And to uh, basically, like where we're at right now is here's my array on the right side and where we're at now is we're creating this part. So then we want to see if like it's actually available or not. We just created just all the available slots based on that window. Now we're going to go see if it's actually available. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to go and check my booking table to see if uh, there's already a booking for that specific time. So we're doing the item item dot start which is our start time and then we're checking our our database for anything that matches that for that coach id so if it's if it returns empty the list is empty uh we're we're gonna do another conditional um but if it's not empty we're just gonna say uh yeah there's something there so it's gonna return a false um like this one right here and then if uh, we're going to do another if conditional, and this one's basically uh, checking, I don't want people booking within one hour. Um, it needs to be greater than one hour uh, from their current time. 
Um, and so if it isn't, we're just going to put it as false for them. Um, otherwise, it's going to be true. And that's basically what I'm doing. Um, and that's, that's what allows it to work uh, like I showed in Flutterflow. Um, basically, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty good so far, and it's doing what I want. The issue is um, I was planning to use this with a Google uh, Workspace Calendar API. And that is just such a nightmare to work with. And uh, they don't have like a really good way to deal with availability and stuff. Um, so you can basically do it like this. And what I'm going to be doing is when that booking happens. So when I add the record for the booking, I'm going to have another one right here, which is going to be an external API request. And what it's going to do is it's going to create an event on Google, uh, on the Google calendar, the workspace calendar, where, uh, all the coaches of the organization have, uh, email accounts there. And what, what's going to happen is I'm going to create an event for, uh, the coachee and then the coach, and I'll let Google handle the emails, uh, and the notifications and all that. Like I can still do the, my in-app notifications, but, um, I'm also going to just let Google ha handle the other side and eventually I'll fully integrate it so it can check on uh, like if something's already double booked on the calendar. But as of now, uh, like it will show up as a double booking and we'll have to manually like decline or accept it uh, just for the time being. So until I can figure like, out the rest of that, um, I'm not like my other solution would be basically uh, to figure out a way whenever anything gets added to the Google calendar is to just add it into my bookings table uh, for that coach ID. Um, and then just, yeah, so it could be part of this calculation or this uh, function. Um, but yeah, uh, that's basically how I'm doing it. So uh, I hope you... Uh, found this useful and let me know if you have any questions.